So my name is Keisha Finley, and I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at the National Human Genome Research Institute at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. Well, I study fungi and bacteria on skin. We're covered in them. They're everywhere in the environment. They surround us. So within the field, it's called the microbiome, which is basically the study of all of the microbes and their genes that are on the human body. So we're really interested in looking at what bugs are on you. Baseline, what do, do the microbes on your skin look like? And how it basically keeps you healthy when the communities are happy. And then when there's some sort of shift, whether that be because you've taken antibiotics, because you have a, a cold or something, some sort of bacterial infection, and that can completely change the types of bacteria or fungi that are residing on your skin or even in your gut. And then that can create some sort of disease state. I remember reading a paper one day on the gut microbiome. So looking at bacteria in the gut and how in a lean person versus an obese person, there are different types of communities of bacteria that live in the gut that can shape how a person is able to break down their food products and basically store that food as energy or store it as fat. They've been on a course of antibiotics that totally wipes out all the good bacteria in their gut. And because it wipes out the good bacteria, the bad bacteria are able to grow. And that causes diarrhea and really bad infections and could lead to death if it goes untreated. And there has been research where they've taken feces from one individual and transplanted that into another person who has a really bad gut disorder, which could potentially kill them and so they give them this bolus of poop that has bacteria in it and it actually cures the person. There's about 80 to 85 percent success rate and it's called a fecal transplant. And the reason it works is because we now understand what bacteria are in our gut and how they're actually helping to keep us healthy, how they can also cause disease and how those communities shift that can also create disease. And so because we have that information we're able to take bugs from one person and transplant it into someone else and that could actually cure someone of a, of a disorder. So there, there's a, a physician in Canada who's desiccating down the poop sample basically to a powder essentially and putting that in a pill form and having people swallow. But you have to take 20 to 30 of the pills in order for it to actually offer protection and cure you of that bacterial infection. So a normal day to day for me is basically getting the samples that we brought up from the NIH. So this is um, an image showing plates um, that we actually cultured from healthy human skin. So these are all fungi um, from different participants in the study. This is a plate of the heel, toenail, nose, back, and toe web. And this is what we would call a yeast. I mean, that was found in the nose of one of the participants, and we all pretty much have that in our nose because we breathe in mold spores all the time, which don't cause us any harm because we're pretty healthy. This is a particular fungal isolate that's found in, in people who have foot infections. And so it was really interesting to see that we were actually able to recover that from this participant. And then on the back, you have malassezia, which is actually the most dominant fungus on the human skin. It basically represents 50 to 80% of total skin fungi. So it's pretty much all over us. We all have it. But then what about someone who has acne or has some other skin disorder like psoriasis or a rosacea or eczema, for example? What does it look like in that individual and how can we use that information to basically help treat that person? So this is DNA that's been isolated from one of our patient samples. So that we can then do PCR to amplify regions that are specific to the bacteria and regions that are specific to the fungi so we can use those regions to identify what's in our sample. This kind of work requires a lot of sequencing, <laughs> a lot of manpower to actually do the processing. How many more patients? And then the data analysis part which means you spend a lot of time in front of a computer doing analysis and that can take anywhere from weeks to months to actually complete your analysis because you can generate up to five million sequences depending on how many participants you have, how many samples you've sequenced. The public is what I think really excites me is just being able to talk to students, uh, parents about what I do and just get everyone excited about the microbes because they're here and they're not going anywhere and really they outnumber our human cells by 10 to 1. So we're pretty much 10 percent human, 90 percent fungi, bacteria, viruses, archaea, etc. So we have to love them because <laughs> they're here. <laughs>